Good morning, YouTubers. I'm glad you're all here. Thank you very much for joining me. Hello to everybody there in South Carolina. Are you are you earthquake prepared? Late last night, about 9.33 p.m., you had uh, your 81st earthquake near Elgin, South Carolina. There was actually about three earthquakes in South Carolina or close to there over the weekend. USGS said this latest earthquake was a magnitude 2.5, but it was actually um, closer to a 3.5, if not a little bit larger. USGS is finally taking this earthquake swarm. Yeah, 81. Um, a little more serious. They brought in some temporary monitors to uh, get a more accurate location of the earthquakes and supposedly going to try and figure out what's going on. Um, you've had quite a few earthquakes of a magnitude 3 or greater. Uh, let's see, we got one here, a 3.3. .3. Now, this is uh, probably when the swarm started, um, December 27th of last year. Let's see, um, yeah, we got a 3.3. .3. I believe this is May, uh, May 9th of this year. Um, what else we got here? We got a 3.3, .3, a 3.4. Let's see, that one was May 9th. We got another one, um, June 26. Yep, the plates are moving. As the Earth's magnetic field weakens, you're going to see more and more of these. You probably have larger ones too, seeing how, um, yeah, there's been so many of them that are larger than a 3.3 .3. now this one here um let me see what i got here that was one moment let me click back on it june 29th they said was a 3.6 it was actually a 4.1 much like today's they said was a 2.5 but it was actually um a 3.3 3.5 I uh, decreased the size of the uh, earthquake signature. Um, yeah, I would say it was probably a 3.5, but I gave him the benefit of the doubt, and I got a magnitude 3.38. There's its earthquake signature, and let's make this bigger. You can see that it's tectonic in nature. The plates are moving. The fault is moving. It is near a fault zone. Try and make this bigger. Yeah, sharp little points all right let's make this bigger yeah look at this right here this seismic signature okay let me make this bigger if i can make it bigger there you go yeah plates are moving there's been a recent small earthquake yeah right there That one comes in as a magnitude 1.20. That would have been this morning. And you got some more popping that's going on right there. There's another really small one. That comes in as a magnitude 0 0.62. And you can see here by the spectrogram. Yeah, we got more. Let me go back to the signature. And you can see it. Yeah, lots of little stuff going on. Yep. 7.45 a.m. local time. Yeah, you got some more here. I think I was off on the time. This one here, 13.22 universal, would have been at 9.22 local time. Yeah, I gave you a central daylight time. Yeah, let's look around here. Anyways, let's go up. I'll pull it up a little bit. And you can see, I don't know if you can see or not. But see all this activity that was going on? Yeah, the plates were moving. Actually, there was four earthquakes over the last seven days. Um, this one down here in Georgia, I did report late last night. Let's see, we got a 2.3. They're saying, but I showed you last night that it was actually larger. And a 2.2. And then... Uh, where is it? Oh, Greensboro. Yeah, if you look, you can see here. Yeah, we got the plates moving. They're slowly pushing towards the west. This one here. 
um, 2.6 Virginia, New Madrid, uh, 2.7, that was on the 26th, and a 2.8 on the 27th. I did reports on those also. USGS gave it an intensity level of 6. EMSE said it was a magnitude 2.6. And some of the reports um, that were sent into them, yeah, it's good that you send it into EMSC because they will tell you what people felt. One report from Elgin said there was a loud boom and then rattling. Another one from Elgin felt like a little rumble and heard a boom. Another one said it was a big boom, then 30 seconds or so of rattling. Um, a baby quake, felt the quake in Elgin. A loud rumble sound, now this is Columbia, with minor house vibration, dogs barked. Um, slight vibration, short-lived, loud rumble, light shaking in um, Blythewood. Let's see, South Carolina, they felt it. Uh, sounded like thunder, a bit of rumbling, maybe three to five seconds. That was Columbia. Okay, lying in the bedroom watching TV and felt and heard the rumble around 9.30 p.m. Another one from Columbia. Cats ran into the house as if, saying what the f is going on yeah heard a bang and felt a long vibration felt like an explosion short with boom uh woodfield um it started again waiting for the aftershocks heard a great rumble but it didn't feel but didn't feel the tremor itself or myself i should say Short but big rumble and slightly wall and doors vibrating. Okay, ground shook. Very apparent. This is from Lexington. It was an earthquake. Felt stronger than a 2.6 this time. Well, it was. And that's all they got sent in. Here is the felt reports that USGS um, has posted. Let's see. We got it all the way up over here. Uh, close to uh, Greenville, Wilson, it looks like, intensity level 3, and, oh, I hate that when I do that, it was felt in Myrtle Beach, or close to Myrtle Beach, intensity level 4 from there, uh, 4, three from Myrtle Beach. Let's see. Intensity level four. Let's see. Um, what else we got? They don't give the name of the, the towns on these. They don't often put all the felt reports, but here you can see intensity level six. Intensity level 6 would have been uh, magnitude 4 to a 4.5. Felt by all, many frightened and run outside. So some of you must have said you ran outside. Falling plaster in chimneys, small damage. Check those water lines. Check the gas lines. Definitely. Did you have damage? If so, yeah, let us know. What did your pets do? How long did it last? Yeah, 81 earthquakes. Oh, my goodness. Yep, yeah, let's bring this out to show some of these uh, locations. They must not feel confident about the locations if they're um, saying they're going to put the uh, monitors in so that, um, you know, they can get a more accurate. This red line drawn out here is the Eastern Piedmont Fault System. I'll give you a link to this paper here. It says here, uh, reactivation of the Eastern Piedmont Fault System. Uh, this poster was published in 2006. Another paper published in 1977 talks about the geological anomalies that were known to be associated with the faults. Uh, the fault system extends northeastward from Goat Rock Fault in Alabama and West Central Georgia, crossing the lower Piedmont of South Carolina, passes beneath the uh, segment of the coastal plains in the Carolina, 
and then flanks the uh, Raleigh Belt in North Carolina and continues into Virginia, forming perhaps the most extensive fault system in the eastern United or eastern North America. And I've talked about the collisions of the uh, different tectonic plate. Um, here's another paper that talks about the subduction between the North American and African plate. I told you how there's a, a remnant there during the late um, Paleozoic period. So, so going back to uh, Google Earth, here is uh, where it's subducting um, on you know the African plate, plate, and we also got the Carolina trough. Now I don't have a fault zone drawn completely out. Um, I think I probably should, but here we got the Eastern Piedmont Fault down here at the bottom, marked out in red. Up over here is the Butterwood Creek. And if you look at the mountains, um, yeah, you can tell that this fault would, would go all the way up over here. The reason I'm showing you this Butterwood Creek is because of this image on this document that shows, see the little, kind of like little zigzag S's? This is the uh, shear zone that they got here on this paper. Yeah, this might surprise some of you um, there. Volcanic rocks indicate the prominence of explosive volcanism. The Carolina Slate Belt rocks in Virginia are considered to be more mothic. Now that would be like basalt, slow moving um, lava. This interpretation fits with the prevailing idea of the tectonic evolution of the Piedmont, um, the Piedmont Fault. These ideas are that the collision of microcontinents, island arches, continental fragments, you know, the fragment of the African plate and seamounts, preceded the final closure of the Piapetus Ocean in Paleozoic times. You know, and I talk about thrust earthquakes and how dangerous they are and how you can have a larger earthquake in this location. Um, in this paper also here, it talks about how they believe that the Carolina Slate Belt rocks were thrusted over the Raleigh Belt. More likely, it's trying to do that again. I also wanted to show you the uh, solar wind prediction here. You can see it up there on the top. And this is the uh, time frame of when the uh, earthquake started. And you can see here, we are right on the edge of uh, being blasted by the solar winds of the sun. Uh, let me go forward a little bit. I was going to push play, but... Um, okay, can you see that as it moves through? I came, I stopped it, and we'll go up. You can see the time. Okay, let me bring it. I wish I could make this smaller and show you. Okay, let me go up here. And ah, I'll just hit play. Okay, and there's the time. And the date. Now this predicts all the way up through the 4th of November. Oh, excuse me, the 5th of November. Yeah. Here we have the planetary index. Um, each line is three hours, and you can see um, during that time of the earthquake that it was elevated. See that? So over 1,190 people sent in felt reports to USGS, and I appreciate those that send it in to uh, EMSC. Yeah, I would definitely check for damage, and you are quite capable of having a larger earthquake. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, thank you very much for your support. Um, please put your comments down below. Please stay safe, and I will talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.